Hi! <laughs> what is up everybody? Welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Victoria Rose. I am a 24-year-old woman of transgender experience and I make all kinds of videos here on YouTube. Anything from femininity content to commentary. So if that sounds like fun to you, then make sure that you subscribe to this channel so that you can join the family and never miss out on a new upload. Makeup. I know for so many trans girls like myself, it is a very daunting task to get into the world of makeup. My backstory is I transitioned at age 14 and my parents had told me that just like my sister, I had to wait until I was 16 to wear makeup. I went to them one day and I go, y'all, I need this. I need this to pass. Makeup can make such a huge difference in the way that other people perceive you and the way that you perceive yourself. So I remember the first time my parents told me, you know, go ahead, put some makeup on and come out and we'll see, you know, if we like it, if we don't, what to take away, what else. So I did that. And I was in that bathroom for two and a half hours. Do you wanna know why I was in the bathroom for two and a half hours? Because I started out with liquid eyeliner. The eyeliner was getting into my tear duct and like leaking all to my face. I looked so ugly, I was crying. <laughs> it was so, it was bad. So I have made this video that 14 year old me really desperately needed. And any of you who are just hanging out with makeup, whether you are transgender or not transgender, this video can help you on your journey in beginning makeup. This look that I'm going to be teaching you today is really just, you just went to the drugstore, you just got a couple things and you want to put a look together. I'm so excited to show you guys how to do this super easy, basic makeup look. And before I dive into that, I do have a word from our lovely sponsor over at Catch Beauty. Hi, if you've been following me for a while, then you would know that permanent hair removal and permanent hair reduction has been a huge roadblock in my transition. I don't know about you guys, but at least for me as a transgender woman, my hair removal regimen has always gone so above and beyond that of the average person. I have spent thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours in salons getting professional laser hair removal and electrolysis on my face and my bikini, and I was just thinking to myself, like, if I continued going to these salons, for the rest of my life, for my arms, for my chest, for my belly, for my legs, for everything, I would never stop. <laughs> and it's true, you would never stop. So that is when I did some research and I found the Catch Beauty at Home IPL Laser Hair Removal Device. Catch Beauty's IPL Laser Hair Removal Device is my top rated way to get salon quality results at a fraction of the price in the comfort of your own home. I've been using their device for several years on my legs, on my arms, and I'm just recently moving to my underarms. I used to have like pretty thick arm hair and it's gone. The ones that are here are very light and blonde hairs, which wouldn't have been picked up by laser anyway. Catch Beauty wants to help us through even the hairiest parts of our transition. So whether you are a trans girl, not trans, a man, a woman, somewhere in between, if you are interested in having permanent hair removal and permanent hair reduction, then please check out the link in my description box below to check out the Catch Beauty at Home IPL laser hair removal device and make sure that you use the code ROSE for money off your order. Thanks so much to Catch Beauty for sponsoring this portion of today's video. And without further ado, let's dive into a simple, easy, everyday makeup tutorial. So we are starting out bare-faced. I have a couple blemishes, kind of hard to see right here and right here. And this is my face. I have never gotten any procedures, any filler, Botox yet. Stay tuned, it's coming one day. But I do feel like because of that, I'm in a position where I can give all of you some really hard-hitting advice on how to feminize your face with as little makeup as possible. And this is going to be a sort of a beginner's tutorial. So this is something where you could go to the drugstore and pick up a couple things without breaking the bank. Maybe it's your first time wearing makeup. Maybe you just want to dabble in it. You want to experiment and not feel too overwhelmed. So I have devised a list of things that you will need for this video. For this makeup look, you are going to need a good moisturizer or one that you use on the regular, a foundation, a flat top blending brush, tweezers, mascara, a tinted lip balm, and setting powder. I prefer mine to be pressed setting powder. You can do loose setting powder, but I think pressed is easier to work with. Additional tools that are not necessary but are optional would be a peach or orange color corrector, a bronzer, a brow gel and or brow pencil, and additional brushes or a sponge. When I was 14 and just starting with makeup, I had no idea what to do and I was piling on so much makeup. This was like 20, well, like 2013 or something, and it was just the start of the 2014 makeup era with like the blocked out brows, the cut crease, everything where everyone was in drag makeup all the time. 
And the thing is, with such heavy makeup, less is more, and especially for trans women like myself. By the way, in this video, I'm going to be using words like should or shouldn't or you want to or not want to. Makeup is totally a unique experience. Do whatever makes you feel comfortable. I'm just speaking from my own point of view. If you don't like something, don't do it. So I'm starting out with my hair back in a clip. I'm just really trying to get it out of the way so that I can have just a canvas that is not covered in hair. And speaking of not covered in hair, shave your face if you need to. Not all of us have to. Maybe you've had laser electrolysis, whatever. But if you have to shave your face, shave your face. But most importantly, do your skincare before starting your makeup. I love to do a good face wash and some moisturizer. I let it sink into my skin a little bit. You can still see I'm a little bit dewy, but it's not like greasy and the makeup's not going to slip and slide. Some of you may have some shadows from facial hair and that could be your upper lip, that could be in your chin, that could be all across your face depending on who you are. There are ways to correct this, and that would be a peach or an orange color corrector. What a color corrector does is it takes a color from the opposite end of the color spectrum that you are trying to conceal, and you apply that on top of that discoloration, and then let that dry, and then put on skin-colored makeup. The reason this works is because, say, blue and orange are on opposite sides of the color wheel, they're complementary, and they cancel each other out. So under your eyes or above your lip might be a little bit blue. So in order to cancel that out, you might want to use an orange color corrector. A word of caution, however, I will not be using a color corrector in this video because in my opinion, it's very hard to start out with a color corrector. It's very easy to go way too far and it's easy to have that orange beard that you see sometimes. So I can find an example, I'll put it up right here. It's easy to have sort of like a orangey splotchy beard. So we're just gonna start out with bare Bones. I do have some texture. I used to have like cystic acne, so I would just pile on so much makeup, but it wasn't feminizing. It was just hiding aspects of myself. So if we're just starting out and you don't want to look too cakey, you don't know how it's going to sit on your skin, what you're going to want to do, we're going to take our foundation. This is the Born This Way foundation, but you can use literally anything that you want. And if you have more to cover, then I would say just do a little pump and then go right in. But for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my moisturizer, the same one that I just used. You see, it's almost like a one-to-one. -one. You can play with the ratio that you like for you, but I'm just going to mix this together. The reason why I do this is because I don't want as full of coverage as this foundation offers. And if I do, it would be in specific areas, which we will get to in a moment. So here we are with our sort of blend. Now this might not exactly match my skin tone because I've been tanning, but we're not gonna talk about it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our flat brush. We have our foundation mixture on our hand. We're just going to dab it in and quickly just dab it all over the face. Before you do too much blending, you just kind of want to make sure that it is all over the skin. And then in areas that you don't need as much coverage, for example, for me, that's around here, the sides of the face, less so the center, I kind of buff. So I like to buff it into the skin. And what this does is it actually allows the skin to absorb the makeup and it looks a lot more like it's a part of the skin. So with the flat brush, I am dabbing and I'm swirling. And the areas that I want more coverage, I am dabbing, and I'm going to go back over those areas later with that same foundation, but not watered down. And please do not forget your neck. This is not going to match perfectly, and that's why it's even more important for me to blend down my neck. <laughs> okay, so I have not yet done my under eyes. I've just kind of slapped some stuff all around, but I will put a side-by-side -side here and here of before and after just this light base. And I think you can already see this has made a big difference, and it's such little makeup in person and even up close on camera. You really don't see any makeup. So for the under eyes, or say maybe you have, like I have a blemish right here, uh, maybe you have some shadow on your chin or your lip that you want some more coverage for. I'm going to not water it down. I'm going to go right in with a little drop of foundation. You can always add more makeup. You can't really take it away. I dab my little brush in there and I'm just going to really quickly go all over the eye, including the lid. You're going to want to get the lid because in a woman of transgender experience, we tend to have a heavier brow bone. And what this does often is it can lead to both thin skin on the eye and also a shadow. So what this does 
is without packing on too much makeup under the eyes where it can crease and look really obvious, you're brightening up the entire eye area. So see the difference. Look at how much more awake I look on this side versus that side. So we're gonna go back in and do the same thing to the other eye. Now for the blemish, it's harder to see now, but you can also see it has sort of like a freckle. I'm just gonna cover that up. I don't normally, but I'm just going to show you for demonstrative purposes. I'm going to put a little dot on each of those spots and I'm gonna let them sit so they get tacky. You'll notice that I actually didn't apply too much makeup on my forehead and the reason I did that is because I'm a very expressive person um, and I move my forehead a lot. It's harder to see, but I have not had any Botox yet, so I do tend to crease in that area quite a bit. So I don't really need much coverage, so if you don't need the coverage, don't wear it. In fact, most days, I don't even do the base of foundation that I just did. I just do, if I'm wearing any skin makeup at all, I do a little bit on the eyes just to kind of add a cloud of brightness to my face. And you really want to take some time to blend when you're doing this because the last thing that you want is a harsh line. When we're talking about the differences between a skull of someone who is assigned male at birth versus the skull of someone who is assigned female at birth, the male skull has a lot more angles, especially once we hit puberty. Your skull tends to grow and you have a much more angular, wider, larger face overall. Contouring and highlighting can really help with the wideness and any unwanted shadows, but what it does do is it makes your face more angular. So we're not doing any contouring today. We are going right in with just skin. We can focus on contouring another video. In fact, I'll link a video right up here where I do a intense male to female and female to male contouring on half of my face and you can see the huge difference, but that's really not necessary for this. So as you see, this has sort of dried down and we're just gonna really gently tap over it. Now that the skin is on and it's set and it looks pretty evenly blended, what we are going to do is we're going to powder it. First, I typically like to sort of fan my face and make sure it's all nice and dry or at least tacky so that I'm not putting powder on a wet, wet face. But honestly, if you're taking the time to blend, it shouldn't be that wet anyway. So before I set anything with this powder right here, you can see it's very well loved. I already hit pan. This is just an e.l.f powder, just whatever you got around you. They're, I want to say they're all the same. Maybe they're not, but you can get a colored one, whatever. I prefer translucent because I like to do like a cream contour and stuff on other days and then set it with a transparent powder. So you're going to make sure that any lines that are on your face are nice and blended out because once you have lines in your face and you set it with this powder, it's going to be set into your face. It is going to be there you can't blend it out once you've set the crease in there. So make sure you're nice and blended everywhere, especially on top of the eyelids here because that is the place that creases for me the most. And then I just go in and I powder. Now let me tell you what I love about translucent powder or really any face powder while I'm doing this. So I don't tend to wear skin makeup every day. I used to every single day I thought that I needed to and then when I stopped wearing it no one noticed in fact I feel like I pass a lot better without a bunch of skin makeup on I do wear this clear powder almost every day the reason for that is you saw me when I came on here initially my skin's kind of dewy I do wear a lot of moisturizer and SPF on my face so it does reflect a lot of light there are parts of my bone that I want to change on my face and when it hits the light from an overhead or whatever, it reflects. So for example, this dimple in my chin, harder to see, you know, this prevents the light from bouncing off of it as much. I already have makeup on it, so it's kind of dimmed down, but especially there and the brow bone. My face is pretty set. I don't worry too much about setting um, the cheekbones because I like that to be nice and dewy, but because I want my makeup to stay all day, this is going to let it just lock into my skin and it won't budge until I remove it. Okay, so now you have an even base to go out in. This is nice, like I said, it's not exactly my skin tone, but you can tell it's not too uh, cakey, it doesn't look like it's sticking out from my skin, it looks like I just have a lighter face and I tan my body. Now, what I would typically do, because this isn't exactly my shade, is I would go in with some bronzer. At the end, I will do any additional steps that I might do, but I will leave this 
as the face that I'm teaching you all how to do. So ignore any bronzer. We're gonna move on to our eyes. So first things first, let's talk about brows. Tweeze your eyebrows. Go to a salon, get them waxed. Right now, get up, go, go. Go get them waxed. I've actually never gotten them waxed. <laughs> I tweeze them myself. I use like a tweezer man. They're the best tweezers you can get. Worth the investment. If not, just get some tweezers and tweeze your eyebrows thinner. It's called boy brow for a reason. Sometimes I like a thicker, fluffier brow, but it's not feminizing. And if you're trying to feminize, you want thinner brows. You're not pencil thin, not Pam Anderson thin, but you do want thinner brows, a higher arch, and just a clean look. So get your brows done. Um, that's step one. <laughs> and if you feel like you need some kind of makeup in your eyebrow, I would recommend just a brow gel. This is from Milani and it's clear, but you can get a colored brow gel and it can do wonders. You can also do a brow pencil. This is like sort of a marker from NYX. In fact, just for this, because I over tweezed my eyebrows actually. I have the shape of the brow, but it's not too much. Like it's not anything to write home about. So I just kind of go in and draw a couple hairs just sort of adds a little bit more definition now you don't have to do this because like i said being more angular is definitely more of a masculine trait i just like my brows to look a certain way so they're gonna <laughs> really such a negligible difference but to me it just makes a world of a difference you can already see my face looks more framed this is just by nyx it's the lift and snatch like whatever it doesn't matter just some kind of little pencil that matches your hair color and then if you want to you can just brush the hairs up in a way with a brow gel and this just kind of keeps it in place for the rest of the day the biggest tip i give any trans girl always if you don't want to do any other makeup if you don't feel comfortable doing skin makeup or eyebrows or anything else wear mascara i don't care i don't care put mascara on, put it on. Lashes make such a crazy difference. If you see somebody with really beautiful skin, that could be a boy or a girl. You see someone wearing eyeliner, that could really be a boy or a girl these days. See someone with lashes, that is such an exclusively feminine thing. So use mascara. I love a false lash, but I'm not gonna do that in this video because that's like extra. Now, if you are just starting out, what happens with mascara, especially a new mascara, is that can be pretty wet. So what you're gonna do, you can just go straight in, that's what I usually do, but you can go right on the edge and brush some of the excess product off of the brush and that will give you a much more controlled application and you won't have as many clumps. You might not have, you know, any streaks from messing up and your lashes aren't going to look as clumpy as they would if they were wet with this mascara. Now, I have naturally curly hair, so my lashes are pretty lifted. I don't curl my lashes, but if yours grow out straight, I would recommend curling them like once or twice and then applying mascara. Okay, so I zoomed in and for mascara, I'm going to be looking, I have my mirror here, and I'm going to be looking just down with my eyes open. And you can see this allows me to get into the root without blinking. Well, I am blinking. <laughs> but it allows me to get to the root and not, you know, have my eyes closed or staring straight ahead, trying to be really stiff or turn, you know. So I'm just going to look myself in the eyes and just brush from the root to the tip of the lash. Now, I like to kind of blink into it a little bit. You will find that different things work for different lashes, different people, different eye shapes, and that is totally okay. Um, but this is the technique that I like to use. So make sure that you get all the way to the inner corner of your eye. Leaving your mouth open a little bit also relaxes your face quite a bit. So you're able to apply the mascara without is this out of focus? You're able to apply the mascara without, you know, um, getting it all over your face. And speaking of getting it all over your face, I do have a little dot right here from the mascara. And that's perfect because I was actually going to fake a mistake. And now I can show you how to clean it up. When you have a little dot anywhere on your face from the mascara or eyeliner or whatever that you messed up, instead of just going in and trying to rub it away, let it dry let trust me trust me let it dry completely at the end of your makeup then we're gonna go in and get a q-tip and get rid of it i will show you that but as of right now leave it trust me just leave it don't powder over it but just let it dry this is in the color blackest black i don't know why you would ever use any other color personally um if you want more of like a gray or a blue not blue don't do 
don't do blue, please. But if you want more of like a brown or something, go for that. But I always go for the blackest black. Okay, so as you can see, I have my mascara on. And I don't know if this really you can tell on camera, but it makes a huge difference in the feminine features on my face. I'll put it side by side here. It just is enough to sort of wake your eyes up and it's really feminizing. So if this is not dramatic enough for you, you can just kind of let it dry and go in with a second coat. I'm going to do that now and I'll show you the difference on one eye versus the other. So this is with two coats. You can see how freaking long my eyelashes are versus one coat. All right, now I have two coats of mascara on both eyes. I will only do two coats in the top parts just because I don't like my lashes to look too heavy or my eyes to look too heavy. Now an optional step for eyes could be all sorts of stuff. Typically when I wear bronzer on my face, I like to go in with that same bronzer and a little brush like this and add it to just like the little outside portion of my eye. Now, again, I'm not doing that in this video. If you want to see that in other videos, I have a million. But this is all that we're doing for brows and for eyes. If you messed up your eyes or your brows, you can always go in and clean it up with either some more foundation on a little brush, a Q-tip or your fingers. I recommend a Q-tip. In fact, let's clean this up right now. Just get a Q-tip and once it's all dry, I like to kind of place it on there and roll my fingers so it can stay in that one spot instead of wiping it all over the place. So I just go right in. And as you can see, I just wiped off some foundation, but the black mark is gone. So I'm gonna go right back in with a tiny little bit of foundation on that brush and I am just going to gently place it there. You guys, we are just about done and we are on my favorite part of the tutorial. It is so easy and it makes such a big difference. Okay, so first off, first things first, any foundation that might be on your lips, you're just going to wipe that right away. And now they're bare. So what I'm gonna do is I take a tinted lip balm. I have been obsessed with these since high school. It doesn't have to be Burt's Bees, it could just be anything. I get it in a color that I would get for like a blush or a lip color like not like a, a hot pink or like a red and I put it not only on my lips it's such a subtle change but you can see that I have so much more color in my lips and it draws attention to just my eyes and my lips now because I didn't use any bronzer any blush any color on the face I am going to go in with this tinted lip balm and I'm just gonna do two lines going here and there on both sides. So what this does, I'm gonna blend it in, don't worry. <laughs> it's my war paint, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with my fingers and I'm just going to pat it in. And this really is so beautiful because it stays all day in my opinion. And not only does it add color to the face, but it, it looks like it's your skincare. Like it just looks like a natural and it is kind of because it's just like a Burt's Bees thing. It adds this beautiful sheen to your cheek that just wasn't really there before and it's so subtle that it's hard to mess up. If you add it too much then you must have added like half of the stick because it's very like transparent. It's a, it's a tinted lip balm. It's not a lipstick, you know? I don't know if that really shows up on camera, but it just gives me more of a rosy look. Same with the lips. It just is enough to sort of feminize the face. So, all right, you guys, this is the completed look. What do you think? But because I'm a little extra, and also because I'm a little extra tan, I'm gonna go in with a bronzer. This also, I have hit pan, this is a Sephora brand. You don't have to do this. I, in fact, would recommend against it if you're a beginner, but I just like to add it to my forehead. You can see I have a really square forehead, which is a very masculine trait, and it's something that I want fixed in the future. And because of that, I just add some of this right to the top of my forehead. It doesn't have to be, it's not a contour, it's a bronzer, so it's just making that skin look a little darker. It doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be blended in. That little amount of bronzer on my forehead just like made this match the rest of my body, so that's why I do that. And then the eyes, honestly, I kind of like them the way they are. I always add some eyeshadow on, like my bronzer, but I like how it's looking, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what I would do on the daily. Now, if you're already adding the bronzer to your face, you already own it, and you have maybe a little brush or even like one of those shitty applicators they give you with eyeshadow for some reason, 
you're just gonna get a tiny little bit. You can't even see that there's any on this brush. And I just go in and I add a little bit of depth to where my bone actually protrudes on my brow bone. I just add such a little amount and I feel like it just makes the world of a difference, or at least to me, in my mind, I feel like a brand new woman with just a little bit of bronzer on the eyes. And that is the completed look plus a little bit of extra. This was so easy and required so little product. If you're just starting out in makeup, know that it takes a long time to perfect your craft. Don't feel rushed. No one's rushing you. There's no timer, you're not racing against the clock. Take the time to learn different skills, to appreciate the beauty that is womanhood and doing your makeup in the mirror and just feminizing yourself. It's beautiful and it's a fun experience and it should be fun, it should not be stressful. Cut to me in college trying to put my fake eyelashes on, failing, and then throwing shit around my room. <laughs> that was before I was on medication. That was before I was on medication. So I really hope this video helps some of you. I know for me, it was such a daunting task to get into makeup. I was so bad at it for so many years and I tried to go head first into liquid eyeliner the first day. And I think this is a fair base to start with. I think if you're just starting out with makeup, this is perfect. It's feminizing. It's a little bit of makeup. You dip your toes into it, but it's not a full drag. So if this video did help you out, please make sure you give it a big thumbs up. It helps out my channel so much. Make sure you share with any of your friends that might need it. Leave a comment down below letting me know either your funniest makeup experience or a tip that you thought would really help you when you just started makeup. You are all amazing. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. And until I see you next week, good luck. I love you. Bye.